What's going on, Jerome's? So, yes, the draft is the draft is the draft, but free agency uh, is going to be coming up here first. And it's the most wonderful time of the year because spring uh, hope springs eternal. Just like uh, remember, like the Buccaneers for a couple of years and then also Washington, like they always won the Super Bowl in March because they spent up on free agency. But it's about. It's about finding value. It's about supplementing with free agents. You generally don't build a team around free agents, and finding values is key. And also, uh, a key part of it is players who become cap casualties from other teams. Now, there's a bunch of reasons why. Ooh, Kenny Clark. Kenny Clark. There, there's a bunch of reasons why uh, you're know, sifting through and players that they have to let go because uh, and and building your team around them in, in a supplementary fashion, it, it does make sense because benefits of signing cut players is number one. You don't have to wait until free agency opens on March 13th. Since they've been cut, uh, they are free to sign with the team right away. Uh, as well as number two, they don't count in the compensatory pick formula. Remember, only expiring contracts count into that netting off effect. So if you sign a bunch of cut players versus a bunch of sign a bunch of players on March 13th that are coming off of expiring contracts I mean you could uh, double dip a little bit you get your free agency and you get your comp picks in the following season also uh, some of the cut players may have offset money so they may be just for ease of math say that a player is guaranteed five million bucks for the next season and you can sign them for the league minimum and they're still getting uh, uh, the rest of that up to five million bucks from the other team so uh, th that's why Russell Wilson could have some appeal since uh, he's guaranteed like 39 million bucks. And theoretically, you could sign him for the league minimum if he does hit uh, open free agency. Uh, but here are 15. One five uh, cap casualties for the Vikings. Now we didn't list Russell Wilson because he's the obvious one and also a bit of an outlier. But, you know, you know what I mean, next up, uh, first up, number one, Kenny Clark. That's right. So the nightmare for Garrett Bradbury for a number of years, like uh, Akeem Hicks and Kenny Clark were, were just the bane of Garrett Bradbury's existence the first three years of his career. But Kenny Clark is only 28, the pride of UCLA. It seems like he's been there forever. He's due a $15.5 million base salary and has a $27.5 million uh, cap hit for the Packers in 2024. Now, yes, the Packers are one of the youngest teams in the league, uh, but if they want to shed uh, some of those older veteran contracts like Bakhtiari, like Kenny Clark, come on, baby. Come, come on, because Kenny Clark... I mean, still has some good years left in him. 10.5% uh, career pressure rate, 34 sacks, three-time pro bowler, uh, great against the run as well. And he's exactly what the Vikings uh, would want and need. Now, th this is not a Dean Lowry situation. Like, Dean Lowry can carry Kenny Clark's jock. But Kenny Clark on the nose, he's good against the run. He's good at taking up multiple bodies and gaps as well as he provides a hell of a pass rush as well. I think Kenny Clark is one of the more underrated defensive interiors in the game. And, I mean, th there was a while there where, you know, the top – Top three defensive tackles in the league is Aaron Donald, it was Chris Jones, it was Fletcher Cox, it was Kenny Clark. Uh, and that was the, the Pantheon. And so I, I think that if the Packers do have to let him go, coming across the river, it ain't going to be cheap. It's probably going to be like 16, 17 million bucks a year, but I, I, I would certainly be fine. I mean, since Kenny Clark still has plenty of good football left in him. Number two. Mike Hilton. Now, Mike Hilton is one of my favorite cornerbacks in the game. Yeah, he's 5'9", a buck 80, but he reminds me so much of a diet Antoine Winfield Sr., uh, but he's going to be 30, uh, do a seven, uh, has a $7.5 million cap hit for the Bengals. Now, so that cap number column is is the player's cap number, not what they could fetch in free agency. So it's important to note that. Uh, but the Bengals and Lou Anarama, they love using Mike Hilton, especially in the slot, blitzing, getting after things. Uh, 84 tackles, two sacks, 80.4 PFF coverage grade this year, uh, two picks, and zero goose saying DeAndre Russell, touchdowns allowed. But, I mean... The Bengals may be clearing up uh, a little bit of cap space for the Jamar Chase deal, so they may have to let go a couple of these a uh, little bit more aging veterans who are on mid-level contracts, and Hilton could be a casualty there. There's actually going to be a couple of Bengals on this list. Uh, so I I would love and adore Mike Hilton. I understand that there's a lot of crossover between him and Byron Murphy II, uh, excuse me, Byron Murphy Jr., getting them mixed up. But 
I mean, given Hilton's uh, tenacity and versatility uh, in, in the Brian Flores defense, would absolutely love him at number three. Levi on Wuzuriki, a defensive tackle from Detroit. Now, yes, he's on his rookie deal, uh, but the Lions may be clearing up some some of this uh, some of these spots where on Wuzuriki. So he missed the 2022 season due to a back injury. 2023, more of a rotational guy, and they could be pinching pennies. So uh, clearing up a couple million in cap space uh, of a guy who's been more more of a rotational dude. But he's six three, two ninety, lightning quick first step, and I loved him coming out of Washington. And uh, you know, back in the day, the, the Lions double dipped on interior on day two. So on Muzariki from Washington, Aleem McNeil from NC State, who is becoming a burgeoning superstar, uh, he's going to get paid here very quickly. Uh, but uh, as a sub package monster, uh, a guy, his skill set really reminds me. Remember when the Bears had Roy Robertson Harris? Sort of a, a taller, angular defensive tackle who could get his own pass rush. I mean, that, that's what Levi could be. I, I don't see him as an every down starter, but as a platoon guy who, who could come in on third down and bring some lightning. That's right, man. That's right. Uh, next up, uh, cap casualty number four, J.C. Jackson. Now, J.C. Jackson's weird, where he, he came in as a UDFA in 2018 out of Florida. Uh, excuse me, Maryland was originally at Florida, and you know, ha- has some good size and length. He doesn't have the, the, the all the quickness in the world, but good in zone, also extremely feisty in press, and he was fantastic. He, he was a big part of the Patriots' success for a number of years, but then he got paid five years, $82.5 million deal with the Chargers, and he was asked with the Chargers. Basically, he, he, he just didn't fit in with what Staley wanted him to do, and that's the danger. You, you have a lot of players, uh, especially defensive players, that fit into a specific scheme, but if you pay them and you ask them to do things that they're not capable of doing, I mean, it's just a recipe for disaster. One of the big reasons why Brandon Staley failed in in, uh, in Los Angeles. But uh, he's due a $14.4 million cap charge. Patriots aren't going to pay that. He's going to get cut. Uh, he is only 28. Now, what's interesting is that 2018, he joined the Patriots as a UDFA. Uh, that was the first season of Brian, or excuse me, the last season of Brian Flores uh, as Patriots de facto defense coordinator before he got the Patriots job or the Dolphins job. Really good at talking today. Uh, so there there certainly is a connection there. Also, I, I saw I, I saw a comparison where J.C. Jackson plays defense like Draymond Green. <laughs> you know, the Warriors instigator. And I, I, I can't unsee it. it. It's so perfect. It's great, man. Uh, next up, number five. Uh, nose tackle. Uh, Fo- so Foley, uh, Fadukasi. So I-, I absolutely loved and adored him with the Jets. And again, it's uh, it's another spot of a player who is great in one scheme and then uh, goes to another team and doesn't quite fit. So he's due a $12.8 million uh, cap hit in uh, with Jacksonville this year. He is only 29. He's 6'4", 318. And he was a legit stud with the Jets, man. He, he was a great uh, true blue uh, blue collar nose tackle, but uh, had a falling off with, with the Jaguars, so I, I do think a change of scenery would certainly benefit him, and I, I loved him. I, I, I was down to clown to trade for him uh, when he was on the Jets, fueling the dumbest rivalry in sports history, but now uh, it seems like it could be a cap casualty. I'd love to bring him aboard here uh, in purple. Next up, number six, uh, Tyus Bauer. So we we know that Quasey loves him, the medical dudes, and, and also lo- loves him some mama I can change him type players. But uh, Tyus ba- Bowser sort of got lost in the shuffle uh, with all of the edge rushers in Baltimore. But he's only 28. It seems like he's been around forever, but he's due a seven and a half million dollar cap charge, and he's been sort of out of sight, out of mind because he had he had a knee injury and an Achilles uh, injury over the last two years. Uh, so it is a this is not going to be a Marcus Davenport situation because I think Bowser is going to be much closer to the league minimum uh, or a minimal prove it deal versus 13 million. So it ain't going to happen there. But uh, 40 pressure, seven sacks in 2021. Uh, he, he's a true blue stand up uh, rushing outside linebacker, also has some off ball skills. So uh, I think that he is a guy that has some decent versatility uh, that, that could do well uh, with Flores uh, for very cheap, very cheap. Uh, next up, number seven. Defensive tackle B.J. Hill. So like we said, there could be a number of Bengals on this board because they, they got free up some cash. Uh, but uh, B.J. Hill has a $10.8 million uh, cap charge this year. And for the Bengals, I feel like I mean, him and D.J. Reader have been a really nice duo for a while uh, in the Queen City. But four and a half sacks, 45 pressures, just a solid all-around defensive tackle. Now, like Kenny Clark, uh, B.J. could have a 
uh, you know, pretty decent market uh, in free agency. Also, B.J. Hill is where uh, your mom lives. Uh, but I, I do think that if the Vikings do want to spend up a, a little bit and outside of uh, outside of uh, Christian Wilkins, outside of Justin Madubuke, I, I think that Clark or B.J. Hill could be uh, a decent option on the inside. Next up, number eight, Cody Whitehair. Now, uh, asterisk by Cody Whitehair, Whitehair because he's already been cut. And so... He is aging. Yes, he is going to be 31. Uh, and no, he's not the decent high-end starter that he was for a couple of seasons back in the day uh, with the Bears. But you love his uh, versatility, can play uh, all three interior spots. And as a high-end veteran backup, some leadership capabilities, I- I'm, I'm down for him. And frankly, like Austin Schlutman is fine as a backup center, but White Hair would be better. And uh, much be- much better anchor, uh, much better uh, non-shifting of the line of scrimmage. Uh, I think that he would be uh, a really solid addition. Uh, frankly, would you want White Hair or Chris Chris Reed? I would take White Hair. Uh, next up, number nine. Uh, wide receiver Hunter Renfro. So it feels like Renfro's uh, been looking to get cut or traded for forever, man. But uh, w- with the Raiders, $13.7 million cap it this year. He's only 28. And uh, yeah, Vin- Vince Papali, just Johnny Tryhard, you know, Adam Thielen 2.0, all that stuff. But no, uh, Hunter Renfro, you know, 5'10 slot receiver, extremely shifty, can get open. And it, it just seems like for whatever reason, the last couple of years, he's just inert. Like it hasn't worked out. But uh, I mean, uh, 25 catches, 255 yards, and zero touchdowns last year. But, I mean, he's removed from a 100,000 season by a couple of years. So he put up 103 catches, 1,038 yards, receiving and nine touchdowns in 2021. He was a friggin' pro bowler. And I feel like, again, uh, whether it's a draft or free agency, always focus on what a player can do versus what they can't. All right? So what, what can Hunter Renfro do? He can come in, play the slot. Four million bucks a year, and you know, work uh, all the underneath routes while JJ and Addison do JJ and Addison things. I I think that would be a really solid pickup uh, in the Kevin O'Connell offense. Next up, number ten, uh, center Bradley Bozeman. So uh, Bozeman with Carolina uh, has a seven point six million dollar cap hit this year. He's only twenty nine. Uh, now Bozeman uh, was really solid in Baltimore. Uh, I, I was down to clown with him in free agency before he went to Carolina and. Yeah, he's 6'5", he's 325, he's got size, he's got ass, he, he's got uh, anchor. Now, a lot of Carolina's offensive line cer- certainly got shred this year. Now, it could be a talent deficiency around Bozeman uh, as well as scheme. It w- wasn't very good. Plus, you know, Bryce Young holding on to the ball too long. So, I, I feel like, you know... And Bozeman had some really good years uh, with Baltimore, and this year just was not great statistically. Uh, 32 pressures, 8 sacks allowed. But you have to take that with a, a, a huge grain of salt given the talent around him as well as Bryce Young behind him. Uh, but I, I think that Bradley Bozeman, if the Vikings want to move on from uh, Garrett Bradbury, I, I would be perfectly fine if they swapped in Bradley Bozeman uh, at the pivot position. Next up, 11. Uh, defensive tackle DJ Jones. Who? DJ Jones. So uh, you're going to look at, at his numbers from uh, Denver last year, especially his run defense. It certainly fell off, but I mean the Denver defense had a lot of issues th- throughout most of the season. They, they get did get their ish together later uh, on, but Jones uh, again, it's another one of those was great in one scheme, was sort of questionable in the other. So DJ Jones uh, rose up as a six round pick and, and played some really good ball for the Niners for a bunch of years. Then he got paid a three year, $30 million deal with Denver. Hasn't quite worked out, uh, has a $13 million cap charge this year, but uh, it, it is a, a spot where I don't think that he's going to get paid massively again, uh, probably a one year prove it deal. And the whole mama, I can change it um, uh, narrative. That certainly uh, what would stick in there. Number 12, Heineke, as a bridge quarterback, I mean, come on. I mean, Taylor Heineke, I always loved him. Plucky, undersized, pride of Old Dominion, gl- kicking glass doors and all that stuff. And, I mean, Heineke took Washington to the playoffs. <laughs> is that wild? Well, yeah, but last year didn't work out in Atlanta, so whatever. And uh, this is not for be for him to start. It would just be him as a backup quarterback, sure. Uh, 13, Tim Patrick. So, uh, again, Quasey loves him, the medical guys. And Tim Patrick... I mean, Tim Patrick has had some bad luck, man. So he's due a $15.6 million cap charge from Denver. He ain't getting that. Uh, he is 30, uh, but 6'4", 212, undrafted out of Utah. Uh, but big-bodied, outside-the-number receiver, solid leadership in the locker room as well. Uh, but back-to-back years, 
an ACL tear and then popped his Achilles. Uh, but before that, he had back-to-back 700-yard seasons. So it, it could be a, a spot where he's not going to get paid big and bringing him in as a change of uh, outside the number, size X receiver uh, as a wide receiver 3-4 for a couple million bucks. I mean, sure. Uh, next up, number 14. Uh, linebacker Jermaine Pratt. Now, I love Pratt, 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 and he, he's due a six point nine million dollar cap charge, and he's only twenty seven. Now, he's not a, you know, he's not a whirling dervish world beater. Like he's not a Patrick Queen. He's not a Roquan Smith. Uh, he's not a Fred Werner. He's not that. But he is a, a rock solid, uh, paint by numbers, meat and potatoes linebacker, a good leader as well, team captain. Uh, and I, I think that if the Vikings do move on from Jordan Hicks. Uh, I think that uh, Pratt would be a, a very solid anchor uh, to pair with uh, Ivan Pace Jr. Uh, 118 tackles, two sacks last year. Yeah, like like we said, not overly flashy, uh, but a guy who certainly will get the job done and probably for an economical price as well. Uh, lastly, number 15, Cooper Rush. Uh, again, a lot, lot like Heineke, just as a bridge quarterback. Cooper Rush, the pride of Central Michigan, uh, was a backup for the Cowboys for a bunch of years. But now that they have Trey Lance in the fold, maybe Cooper Rush is expendable. Uh, and also, he's 30. Doesn't that feel like he, he's been in the league forever? Anyways, but uh, yes, Cooper Rush, he of the, the Vikings killer uh Role back in 2021, uh, Cooper Rush came into U.S. Bank Stadium and led the Cowboys to a 2016 win, uh, completing 60% of his passes, uh, throwing for 325 and two touchdowns. So, yeah, it uh, ne- never sleep on. Hey, that guy played well against us scouting, even though Quasey wasn't here in 2021. Doesn't matter. But uh, that's it. 15, one five, uh, cap casualty free agents for the Minnesota Fighting Vikings. <sighs> Kenny Clark one time. That's it. That's it, man. Anyways, you know what to do. Skull, production value.